Welcome everybody to a video on Dark Rituals, Malleus Maleficarum. I just want to apologize in advance. I'm trying out different cameras to see if I can get, you know, get the best possible setup. And I realized watching this back editing, there's, there's quite a bit of noise sometimes hearing the lens changing on the DSLR. Um, I think the quality of the DSLR is better, but the constant sort of refocusing is horrible. So I may well give up on that and just stick with my original camcorder. So I hope you're able to still watch and learn from the video and apologies for any uh, irritation. Okay, thought it was time, having spent a little while with my first three videos doing Bloodborne, the board game, time to move on to another game I got. I never actually got around to playing it. I think the size of the instruction manual put me off slightly. So just to see everybody what we're talking about. So this is Dark Rituals, Malleus Maleficarum. Now I'm probably pronouncing that really, really badly, but um, it's the best I can do in terms of the pronunciation. So this is uh, a game from Dark Gate Games. And it's a hefty manual. You are you're looking at a good. Um, you're looking at 43 pages of a lot of text. There's some nice. There's some nice artwork. I must say, I do like the feel of the game. I like the art of the game. But this is a serious manual, and it, it put me off a little bit. Having said that, now that I've actually read the entire manual, I can tell you that it's very, very thorough. You do have to page backwards and forwards quite a lot for your first game. I've not found many situations where I've not been able to find the answer in the manual. But anyway, having said all of that, let's have a look then. What this first video is about is not playing a whole playthrough. Because I, as, as you'll know from my other videos, I'm a solo player. So I will do a playthrough. I'll do a playthrough of a solo mission. But I thought to help everybody, it's a good idea to have a good understanding of the multiplayer game. Because most of the rules are the same. All that changes in the solo games is that the heroes are controlled by an AI. Let's start by setting everything up and showing people how to play the game. First thing you're going to do after you've read this hefty instruction manual, you're going to turn to the page where it tells you about your first encounter. You can see it gives you a map and on the map it shows you where everything needs to go. It shows you the map tiles, the actual numbers. And if you look over on the map tiles, You'll see down here in the corner, it has the it has the number. Just makes it that little bit easier to make sure that you've found the tiles that you need. Let's talk about the setup. So, we have our encounter, and for the purposes of this video, I'm using the, the first one in the book. There aren't really any spoilers here, because this is not a story-driven game. This is primarily a sort of a skirmish game. So... I've got out my four tiles, I've put them out exactly as they need to be. So you've got your botanicals, you've got your witches, your creatures, and this shows you where to lay everything out. If you look up here, you'll see that it, it tells you how many of each of the tokens you should have. So you know exactly when you're getting the pieces out, exactly how many you're going to need. Three, three peasants, three farmers, two of the mortars three of the condemned, two of the ravenous, you know, it, it tells you, that helps hugely. Let's start with our summoning circles. This is where the witches can summon more creatures. Now we have our botanicals, which for some reason I have trouble saying. Botanicals, hmm. Anyway, we put all of those out. And it's important that you don't look at the back of these that they are, you know, put, sort them all so that they're face like this. On the other side of these tokens, there's a number, and that should be random. So you, you want to mix them up without seeing the numbers, so that when you put them out on the board, you don't have any knowledge that you shouldn't have. Then we need to put our chest tokens out on the board, and there'll be eight of these. And now we can start to put our miniatures on. 
you can see that we've got uh, this looks like a normal surf um, this one is the militia basically it's the, the only difference is this is your normal peasant surf just with his pitchfork so we'll stick him down there and then you also have these guys kind of like local village militia only difference is they have a ramshackle shield and an axe so there's one of those in there and we'll, uh, I'll get all of these set up and that I believe is the starting position for this first encounter one thing I will point out to you that I, I think it's obvious but I'll just state it just to ensure that you guys have no doubts these lines on the boards you can just see them here these faint lines these show you the boundaries of spaces for movement you don't have lines drawn on between the boards but reading through the instruction manual quite carefully if you read the section on moving makes it very clear that these edges of the boards count as edges of spaces as well so this is not one gigantic space this is one two three four spaces the, the boards the board forms part of the boundary as well right what else do we need to do to set up well it tells us we need all four heroes you will have a different table layout to me i'm sure but this is how i've set mine up up here at the far end i have got the loot cards the botanical cards and some more loot cards and you're probably thinking why has he got two stacks of loot cards well let me show you when you start this mission you don't have any hero with a higher level than two so what it tells you to do and this is in the manual in the section called seeding the loot or loot deck seeding i can't remember the exact wording but on each loot card there's different types but you see down here in the corner it says l2 and this one up here in the corner says L2, L2, you, you get the idea, L2. These are all, there's another, this is a different type of spell, but there's L2. So these are all level 2 cards. The other loot deck is for the level 3 and level 4 cards, which you don't include in your loot deck until one of your heroes reaches that level. They don't all have to reach it, you just need a hero to reach that level and then you shuffle in the level 3 cards to the existing level 2 um, deck and then obviously when you reach level 4 you shuffle in the level 4 cards now the next thing you're going to need to do is set your heroes up so let's just start with this guy at the top so what have we got? we've got his ID card you will need to familiarise yourselves with these from the book um, I will go over some of this as we, as we play through a few rounds just so that you get the idea find the matching weapon the name is on it, so it's dead easy. Find the matching spell grimoire. Again, name is on it, so it's dead easy. And then you'll also need just one of these. Okay. Then to start, it's really simple. Grab four of the green cubes. Look at the attributes. His starting agility is one. So we put a one in the starting agility over on this card. Okay. Next we look at his starting attack value, it's 2, so we put this in position 2. The next two are 1 and 1, so we simply put those. And now we have our, our tracker showing us his level. The only other thing you need to do is give him his stamina. If we look at the card in a bit more detail, you'll see that down here we have this stamina, 5, 2 and 2. And if my maths is up to speed, that comes out as 9. So we will get nine of the green stamina crystals. Two, four, five. Another four makes nine. I just leave them in the middle of the card. You need to keep them away from these spaces because these are so that you can keep track of exhausted stamina, which will go in here. And then if there's a plague, you will get locked stamina, which will go up on here. So you just keep those in the middle of your card, ready for when you're going to play. Let's just move down and we'll set the next one up, which is Batista. So Batista, we've got his axe. There we go, there's Batista. So again, same thing. Look at his starting attributes. One, two, two, one. So we put one, two, two, one. And then his starting stamina is five and four and one. So he's ten. What have we got there? Four. 
6, 8, 10. So again, nothing that we haven't just talked about. Simply look at the attributes, 2, 2, 1, 1. Put in the little green cubes, 2, 2, 1, 1. Okay, and the stamina for this one is 5, 4 and 1 is 10. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. There's our 10. And then the last one, Wulgar. He's 2, 1, 1, 2. 2, 1, 1, 2. And starting stamina are 4, 6, and 3 is 9. That's 3, 6, 9. So our heroes are all set up and are ready to start playing the game. What else do we need to do? Well, we need to have our reference cards handy. We have our farmer here with his pitchfork. So we just put that somewhere where we can keep an eye on it. We also have our militia with his axe. Again, we just put it handy. Now we come over to this side because we're going to just make sure that we've got our Witchmaster set up. We have our play cards up at the top. Okay, you can tell the play card it just has this, uh, this symbol. We put a single red cube goes on the red circle so let me just show you this on this card there's a, a red circle it's not a hole it's just a picture on the card with a, a red circle there that's where you put the red cube goes on there you then get your soul tokens and just put them in a little pile handy this is a soul token and the soul token is going to be used each time you defeat a hero or a peasant or possess a peasant you simply place one on this board. Then we have our witch dashboards. Okay, there's Pekka. You can see we've got all the stats, etc. So again, you just want them somewhere handy where you can see them. You have a stack of witchcraft cards just here. I've just got them at, out the side here. All the witchcraft cards well shuffled. You've got your spells that are shared by all the witches. They don't have individual ones. They just all have the, the wand card. And then your witch's stamina. Just a big, a big pile of them. 32. It tells you that you always start with 32. It gives you more than 32 in the, in the bag. So I don't know why it gives you more than 32, but it does. This is where you put them when you use them. So as you're expending stamina, so I'm going to move using two stamina, you put them into here. Um, and then obviously this just makes sure it's easy for you to keep a track of what you've used and what you haven't used. And then I've got my reference cards for the minions that the witches call up to do the fighting form, Condemned, Mortis, Ravenous and Possessed Surf. Now we are ready to proceed with the actual game. We'll come back to the book. We'll read Encounter 1, First Ritual. So we've set the board up. There's a little bit of, of sort of flavour text just to bring you into the game. It says, I'm hungry. Hagthe, you're always hungry. Just eat a farmer. But I feel odd too. Is the conjunction shifting? Closing even? We need to sacrifice a few townsfolk. That will keep it happy. Maybe we can eat them afterwards. Four heroes, each with their own reasons for fighting the witches, are drawn to this area. Before they meet, they are surrounded by more monsters than they have ever seen. It's time to fight, not talk. That's the flavour text to get us going. We have all of the boards set up. At the very bottom, underneath the board, if you can see this, this text down at the bottom. This is the last thing that you need to set up uh, that... You know, I missed it the first couple of times. I didn't really notice it, even though it's quite clearly written. It says, Witchmaster's Misery Board placed two Plague Reward Tokens at three and six souls. What it's talking about is that board over there. It wants one in position three. You just put it on top of the number on the space. And one in position six. There we go. So that is set up. Now we're ready to play the game. So as I say, there's no point in me playing this for long because I know what I'm going to do as the Witchmaster, but I also know what I'm going to do as the hero. 
So this really isn't going to be much fun. You know, you need an AI or something to, to make this fun. I will just play through a few rounds just so that you guys know how to play the game. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've forgotten to tell you. Oh, there's one thing I've forgotten to tell you. These tokens are burning witches. These are used when a witch is defeated. You don't remove the witch completely. You simply replace the witch with one of these tokens, like so. And then another witch can come into that space and can save the witch from the burning and bring the witch back onto the board. So that's one other token that we will come across in the game. And a lot of their tokens are double-sided. So this one, obviously, if you need more summoning circles, you've got the other side of it that you can use for that. And then you've got your wound tokens. And these, are, these have got loads of things on the other side. So when I was looking for the plague token, I couldn't find it. And then I realized it was just on the back of a wound token. So here we've got these wound tokens. And these, this one's just a wound on both sides. This one's got, I don't know what that is to be honest, but those look like crystals. So they've got various different things on the sides. This one's got this symbol. And I'm sure that will become apparent in games as you play. It will tell you that you need those. But it hasn't said anything about them for this game. So the Witch Master starts the round with three cards from their Witchcraft deck. Simply take these three cards. This is what I got off the top. Tear. The wound splits open. So this here, this symbol means this is a reaction. That square block there means it's a reaction. And that means that um, when you need to defend, or see it says when you, here we go. So two stamina is expended if you want to use this spell. When you cause one or more damage, you can cause an additional wound. Two more stamina to expend, but that's a reaction. So whenever you do an attack, or a spell, or anything I guess that causes any damage, you can use that card. Let's see if we've got something different. This one is also a reaction. Again, it's got that square symbol in front of the two. And this one is saying, Lucky parry, your opponent's weapon mysteriously misses. So when you defend, so defend is one of the actions you can do when somebody attacks you, for another two stamina, you can re-roll all of your defense dice. Okay, so we'll go, we'll get to a few of these maybe as we go along. The other thing here is this cross down in the bottom left corner. That means that once you've used this once, that's it. You have to discard that. So those are our three spells. So every round you will move all stamina that have been exhausted back to, you know, the middle of the hero's board or back to your big pile of, of unused tokens if you're the witch master. And you can use any hero or any of the Witch Master's creatures in any order that you like. The only rule is that if you're going to use one, you have to do either one or two actions with that miniature, with that character, before it moves on to somebody else. And you alternate. So the heroes always get to go first. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's start with Kurt House, okay? So here's Kurt House. We've got him up on the board We've got him up on the board here. Why don't we move him into here and we can try and deal with this condemned minion. In order to do that, we need to look at his board and we can see here, there's a, there's a little foot with wings, a little boot symbol with wings on next to it. It says one and then there's the sort of electric bolt, lightning bolt symbol that's for stamina. So simply by expending one of his stamina, we can move him one space, they all move one space unless some card or some spell gives them a special ability to move further. He's going to move in there, that's one of his actions. And now, for his next action, we're going to attack. Now when we want to attack, we have to look at the weapon. And when we look at the weapon, we can see here at the top the symbol of the cross swords, that's the melee attack. It's going to cost us three stamina. This is when I say it's a bit hard to read sometimes, there is a three with the lightning bolt symbol just there. And then we look at these, and these are the colours of the dice that we use. This is our dice ball. One blue dice, two yellow dice. We're going to get our blue dice and our yellow dice. We're going to give them a good shake. And then we're going to drop them. Put that stamina back. Wow, that is a pretty good score. So the way you calculate the attack value is you take the score from the dice. So here we've got 
one, two, three, four, five. You also add the character's attack value. Now, this is where you need to look over to the cubes. His attack value is still his initial starting position is two. So we add the two to the five to give us seven. Now, every character has the ability to defend. And there's two types of defense. There's actually what they call a reaction, which is where you can expend stamina to defend. And every every character's card or somewhere you will find that. So with Kurthaus, if he was being attacked, we look at his weapon card again. See down at the bottom, you've got the shield symbol with two stamina and then three green dice. If he was defending, that would be the cost, two stamina, and he would get three dice to roll. And then you would add his, if you like, his armour is, is probably the best way to think of This is like his permanent armour that's always there, his toughness maybe, whichever term you like. But he's got a one, so you would add the one to whatever you got from the three dice, that would give you his defence value. If you wanted to, you could just not use defence, and what you would do then is, as the defender, you always get to choose, you always get to see what the attacker has rolled, you always get to see what their attack value is first. So in this case, as we say, he's got seven. So I'm the witch master, and I'm looking at my condemned that he's attacking, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, okay, this guy's natural toughness, his natural defense is only two. So he's dead. If I, uh, if I don't do something, he's dead. Now, if I want to defend, it's gonna cost me two of my witch master stamina, but I will get two green dice to roll, and then I'd get to add that two to whatever I get from them to give me a defense value. So let's do that just so we can see the mechanics in action. So I'm going to take my two stamina, put them in the pool there, they've gone. And if we remember the Condemns card, it says we get two green dice. So give them a good shake. Well, that's a pretty rubbish shake. We have got nothing at all. We add it to the two, natural resistance it's two. This guy's got seven, so he's done way more than the two. This guy's only got one health, so that means that, that Condemned has had his time on the board. He's gone. We take him off the board and just put him to the side, ready for when we want to summon another Condemned as a Witch. And because we have defeated somebody, Kurthaus now gets to choose which one of these he'd like to move on, and I'm going to move on his Agility. And the reason I'm doing that is because when you want to move through a space that has an opponent in it, if your agility score isn't equal to or greater than their agility score, you can't move. You basically get stuck in the space with them. That's why I've, I've decided to move his to two. We forgot to move his stamina for the attack. The attack costs three, so we need to move three more of his stamina into the exhausted stamina position. So he's only got five left now. Okay. That was a hero to a character's turn. Now it's the Witchmaster's turn. I'm going to activate the Mortis, and it costs, if I look at the Mortis's card, okay, you see the card? You can see this symbol here, to move, it costs three. So I'm going to expend, I'm not gonna sort of move the camera down, but I'm gonna put three of my crystals into the expended, the sort of cauldron image. And that means that this Mortis can move one into the space with Corday, uh, assassin type hero. Now that we've done that, I need to either stop there with one action and let the heroes have another go, but that would be a bit pointless. So I'm now going to expend another three in order to do an attack with the Mortis on Corday. And you can see here that the Mortis has an attack value of two, but also get to roll three yellow dice to build up the attack value so okay that's pretty good we've got three so we have three from the dice two from the uh, cross sword attack symbol here so that's five so if we take a look at Corday we see that Corday has a natural resistance here of one so that really isn't going to do much good at all but if we look at her weapon card we can see here 
that this weapon card for a cost of two stamina she gets to defend with three green dice that's that's pretty good i think the green dice are a bit better than the yellow dice so let's give those a good shake well that's not a particularly great score though so she's got two and she can add that to her natural defense of one you build your attack pool well that was the mortis's attack pool of five then you build your defense pool and that was uh, Corday's defense pool, which was three. The attack is resolved by comparing the attack value to the defense value. If the attack value is higher than the defense value, the target takes one wound. So she will just take one wound. There we go, she's taken her wound. What is going to happen next? We come back to the board. It's the next hero's turn, and I think we'll activate Corday. Why not? Um, oh, I'm sorry, I, you may have noticed I forgot, but we need to remember to exhaust two stamina because she chose to defend. Well, she doesn't need to move. She's already in a space with a creature, so she can attack. Let's just remind ourselves of what her attack is. Her attack is a, well, she can do a ranged attack for three stamina or a melee attack for two. So I think we'll attack the Mortis. She's going to go with two stamina, so I'm not going to show you, but I'm just going to put two more crystals into the exhausted space. She's going to get two yellow dice. So we get the two yellow dice. Okay, she's scored two. We add that to her a natural attack ability, which is two. So that basically gives her a attack value of four. Now the Mortis, if we have a look at the Mortis's card again, we see that the Mortis has got a natural resilience of three and two health, you know, can take two wounds. So even if we did nothing, he would only take one wound, he'd still be alive. But with a natural defense of three, I think it's worth expending three stamina to roll a red and a green to see if we can actually negate this attack completely. So we will spend the three stamina. I get a red and a green dice. Give those a good shake. Okay, well, there we go. That's all we needed to do. With a three there and a three natural defense, his defense pool becomes six, which is way better than the uh, Corday's attack value. So this Mortis takes no damage at all. Now that was one action for Corday, and I think Corday is now going to attack again, but this time, She's going to use her ranged attack, three stamina, blue dice with two yellow dice. She's going to use her ranged attack to target Hagatha, the witch that's up here. She needs two yellow dice and one blue dice. She is going to move three stamina over to here to do her attack. Let's give him a shake. Put them here where you can see the outcome. Okay. All right, well, again, she's got three. We add that to her two, which gives a score of five. Now, Hagatha has a, a natural resistance of three. You see it on the card just there. Well, she will take damage if she doesn't do something. So she is going to defend. It's going to cost three stamina. So I'll just move the three stamina into her pool. It's going to cost three stamina, and she is also, what's she got there? A red and two greens. Right, a red dice and two greens. Now with the witches, it's slightly different. Okay, so she gets two. So she gets a two. She gets to add that to her natural defense, which gives her five. Now with that, with the witches, you look at this here and you see that if she gets five, she can do the spell flesh Slid, however you pronounce that. So if we look on here, flesh slid, it says gain one defense for each minion in your area. Well, she does have one minion in her area, so that will give her a defense value of two plus her natural um, defense of three, which is five, plus the one from the minion in her area is six. Now we compare that to what Corday had. She had the three plus her attack value of two. She only has five. So unfortunately, she hasn't been able to, to take out either of these dark enemies. 
That was the end of Corday's turn. It's the Witch Master's turn again. I'm just going to keep uh, battling away with this Mortis. It will cost me three more stamina to attack again. I put those onto the board. I get to roll three yellow dice. So roll the three yellow dice. And we get two. We add the two to the Mortis's uh, attack strength of two, so that gives us four. What Corday needs is to defend, otherwise she's going to take damage again, so she's going to have to expend two stamina. She gets to roll three green dice, so just give those a good. Right, she's only got one. We add that one to her natural defense of one, which is two. She, unfortunately, she's not got enough to stop this again, so she takes another wound. So if you remember, I just put another one of these little wound tokens on her card. She only can take three wounds before she is stunned um, and has to be not taken completely out of the game, but won't be able to do anything until she's recovered enough to, to get back into the uh, action. That was one action with my Mortis. I'm now going to take another action with the Mortis, and so guess what? I am going to attack again. Another three stamina go into the pool. Another three yellow dice get shaken. And he has got a score of two, three, four, five, plus his natural strength of two. That's a score of seven. That's a really good attack pull. Now this is where we, we see the importance of the stamina. She's not in a great position. She's only got one stamina crystal left. And as you can see, in order to defend, she needs two. So she cannot defend. Her natural strength of one is, is nothing compared to the strength of the attack from the Mortis. She takes the third wound. There we go, she takes that third wound. It means that over on our game board, she is knocked out. We put the miniature on its side so that we know that that's what's happened. That has uh, a, an, you know, an importance to our witch master controlling his witches. This red cube, each time you take out a hero or, or a serf or a farmer or a militia, it gets to move along one. So we move it into the first of those cubes. The other thing we get to do is we get to place our first soul token down. We put it on position one and that is the start of our journey around the uh, soul token board. That was our turn. We did two actions with the Mortis, so we can't do any more actions. That's not our turn anymore. And now it is the hero's turn again. We can't do anything with Corday, obviously, because she is completely out of the game now. All of her stamina gets exhausted. Oh, I forgot to say, when you lay the miniature on its side, however much stamina hadn't been used, it all gets moved into the exhausted zone until the end of this round. It's only at the start of the next round when the exhausted stamina is returned for the heroes to use again, that's the first opportunity Corday will get to get back in the game. What are we going to do next? We are going to attack with our good friend over here. If you see him over there. Vulgar. His weapon, this is a weapon. It, is, it has a melee here for two stamina with three yellow dice or a ranged attack for three stamina with only two yellow dice. So he requires two stamina to move. So we put two stamina in as exhausted. We move him into this space with the condemned. And then he's going to expend two stamina, which we see from the weapon card. Just bring that back. So he's going to do the melee attack at the top. Two stamina, three yellow dice. Give him a good shake again. Okay, he gets two. He adds the two to his attack skill, which is only a one. So he's got an attack value of three. Now the Condemned has a natural resilience of two. And for two stamina, we can defend. So I'm going to spend the two stamina. I'll put the two stamina in my exhausted stamina. He gets two green dice. There's a shake. Okay, he gets one. However, when we add the one to his natural sort of toughness value here of two, that gives him a defense pool of three which is exactly the same as the attack pool of Wulgar. So Wulgar, unfortunately, cannot damage the Condemned this turn. 
And that was two actions taken by him, so it's now back to the Witchmaster. And what we are going to do is not attack Walgar, which might seem the obvious choice, but we're actually going to move Hagtha. It costs two stamina to move her, so we're going to pay the two. And we're going to move her into this space next to Corday, but more importantly, to where the door, let me move that, the door into this building is where there is a peasant waiting for us. So that's one action to move to there, and then we will spend another two stamina to move her into the building with that stuff. Well, that's a militia, isn't it? Yeah, with that militia. We've done two actions. That means we now pass the turn back over to the heroes. I think we'll just continue with Wulgar. So Wulgar is going to attack again, so it's another two stamina going to his exhausted pool. He gets those three yellow dice again. And this time he gets a bit better score, he gets three. We add that to his natural attack value of one, which gives us an attack pool of four. We will defend again, just because, you know, why not? So we spend the two stamina of the Witchmaster to get our two green dice. Oh, okay, this time we've got a one. We add that to the Condemn's natural strength of two, and that moves us a three. Obviously, this time Wolgo has been a lot luckier. He's managed to um, damage this Condemned, and the Condemned only has a, a wound value of one. So he's done it. He's got rid of that. And now we can use that one to increase Wolgo's attack strength to level two. He's still got one action left. We don't have to spend that last action. We can simply leave it at that point and say um, he's done. But as this is just really uh, about showing you how the game works, I can't see any point in not doing one more action. Wolgar actually has an action. Just bring his card round. If you look at his card, you see here, this bag with the arrows up and down is to pick up or put down. He can pick up for no stamina. It doesn't cost him anything. So I will, for his second action, we will pick up the botanical. We pick up that botanical symbol, the... the we pick that up, we flip it over, and we can see we have the number three. So we discard that token now, we've used that, and we can take three botanical cards from the botanical card deck. And what do we get? We get knock and smut, looks like a pile of dust. Morte capuz, I don't know how you pronounce these, but some kind of mushroom. And then a Dragapels. I do not know what that is. It looks like some kind of rotten worm root. I, I don't know what that is. But we have these three things now. We put those down next to his alchemy journal. And we have a look here and we can see that actually now that we've got those, he now has this opportunity here. He could cast this spell as a reaction. When a witch's combat spell triggers in your area, ignore the effect. Now, you can see it will cost him the two ingredients, but it won't actually cost him any stamina at all. So this is really useful. What I will say is you do need to keep remembering to check these cards. You probably need to have a good read of them and you have to try and remember that you've got these things so that you can actually use them at the right time. There's a very good chance your first few times playing, you may simply forget that you actually have these cards. Um, the other thing you also have to remember is remember those numbers that are hard to read. These ones here, 1, 1, 1, these can all be done while the character has level 1 alchemy. So, for example, Kurt House here, as we're looking at, he only has level 1. To execute these spells, not only do you need the ingredients, but you also need to be level 2, these ones. And then these ones here are level 3, and there's one last spell here, level 4. So, now you've seen what happens when you pick up a botanical. That is the end of Wulgar's turn. The Witchmaster is down to four crystals. So I can move a Ravenous that only costs one. And then I will move the Ravenous once more with another one, which will move into the space with Wulgar. I've only got two stamina left. I've done two actions. We now come over to the heroes. Now, some of these heroes have, have barely spent any stamina at all. See Batista down here. He's still got all of it ready to go. Well, what we'll do with him is we will expend two stamina. Put those in the exhausted stack to move one space here with this condemned. 
going to attack. Costs him two stamina to attack with his axe. He gets a blue and a yellow dice. Just give those a shake there. So he's got two. He adds that to his natural attack strength of two, which gives him an attack value of four. The condemned defense value is two. So I'll sacrifice those last two to give this condemned another chance to live for another day. He gets two green dice and he manages to get one. We add that to his two, that gives him three. Unfortunately, uh, that's not enough to defend against Batista's four. So this condemned dies. That means we get to choose one of these to increase by one. We're going to increase his attack value to level three. There's two reasons I've done that. One is because I think he's, I don't know, I just like that character. We're probably going to use him to attack as much as possible. He's pretty tough. He's got more wounds to take than most of them. In fact, yeah, he's the toughest of the lot with five wounds. But the other reason that we've done that is because by moving him to level three, it gives me a chance to just remind you what I was saying about the loot cards. Because we've now got a hero at level three, we need to take this stack. We need to go through this stack until we find the level threes. There we go. These are all level three, level three, level three, ah, level four. Level fours go back over there. And the level threes are going to get mixed in with the pack. They're all mixed in. So when we search a chest, we now got a chance of getting a level three loot card. The Witch Master has no stamina left. We, we literally can't do anything other than something that requires no stamina. And as far as I can see, there is nothing I've got which on the Witch Master's hand which doesn't require some stamina to make it activate. What that means we can now keep going with our heroes as long as we want to until we run out of stamina or decide that we've had enough for this go. So I'm certainly not gonna, gonna stop. So I will do a search action for one stamina. That means I get to pick up this chest and we get to pick a loot. So we get our loot card. And this is, um, looks like an artifact. It's a reaction here. It doesn't cost any stamina. When you attack, you get to add one yellow dice to your roll. That is excellent. Now you see this is a level three card. Now this is saying in order to use this card, you have to have an agility of two and a strength of three. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, Batista, he's got the attack value, the strength of three, but he's only got an agility of one. So we can put this card here and we can equip it, but we can only equip it when we've killed somebody else and we raise his agility by one. So we'll keep it handy. And what we could really do with now is, is getting him over to somebody he can attack in order to get his um, attack strength up. So because the Witchmaster can't go, I can just keep moving him. So it costs me two to move him. So I'm going to pay the two and move. I'm going to pay the two and move. Um, which is the quickest way? Yeah, I'm going to... Oh, I can't pay anymore but what I can do is pay the last one of his stamina to lift up this botanical symbol here this botanical token we turn it over it's a three gets three botanical cards what's he got he's got mushroom 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 I suspect I haven't shuffled that deck quite as well as it needs shuffling but never mind that's what he's got three mushrooms that's it he's done he's got no stamina left Wolgar has still got three stamina left I will use Wolgar's attack against the ravenous he gets three yellow dice there he is over there three yellow dice oh wow that's a good one he gets two four five Plus his strength, which if you remember, his starting strength was one, but we increased it to two when we when he got his first kill. So he's now got a strength of two. So we add the two, so that becomes seven. And the Ravenous only has a natural inbuilt defense of one. And I have no stamina left as the Witch Master. So I cannot expend any stamina to help defend. So that Ravenous is gone. And just like that, we get to increase Wolgar. What should we increase? Let's increase, because his natural attack strength was so low, it's only two. Let's increase his to a three as well. So he's now increased to three. He's got one action left. Has he got enough stamina? He's got enough stamina. It costs him one to search the chest. So we spend that last one. He gets to go in that chest. 
and he will get a loot card. What does he get? He gets another kind of artifact thing. This is a defensive sight. It's your third eye. He needs to have a natural strength of one and an agility of three. If only we'd moved his agility instead of his strength. Never mind. This is the same situation as Batista. We'll keep the card, and as soon as he gets the next opportunity to take out a baddie, will increase his agility so that he can use his card. But when he's got this, you see here, it says for no extra stamina, when you defend, you may re-roll two dice. So that's really useful. So we'll put that over next to him to make sure we don't forget about it. He's expended all his stamina. There's only one hero left with any stamina at all, and that is our old friend that we started with, Courthouse, up at the top of the board. We will move Courthouse over to assist his colleague, Corday. So he costs him one to move, so there's one, and he moves one. There's another, and he moves another. Now, we'd have to stop there because he's done two actions, but nobody else can go. Witchmaster can't activate anybody, so we will then spend another to put him in the same space as Corday. Let's just expend one more of his stamina to pick up this botanical, which has got a two on it. Just two cards for him. Hopefully not mushrooms. Oh, okay, here we go. One mushroom and one pile of dust, sands. I don't know what that is. There we go, put that over by his grimoire. And that is basically the end of a round. Although he's got one stamina left, there's no point. There's, there's nothing can do useful with it. Um, and this is a good place because I think if we show the start of a new round, that's probably enough for you guys to get going with this game and to, to get playing it. I think the manual helps with the rest, but I will do a playthrough of a solo uh, mission because obviously then I can actually play the game and, and enjoy it because there's an opponent, even though it's a, just an AI opponent, but there is still an opponent. So let's just show you what happens when we start a new round. We start a new round, very straightforward. We take all of the stamina that was in the exhausted stack and we move it back to the middle of the character's boards. Move these all back like that. We come back to the Witchmaster. Okay, if we look at the Witchmaster's board, we just take all of the stamina tokens and just move them down here. We haven't used any of our Witchmaster spell cards, but at this point, we are allowed to discard any that we wish to and then bring our hand back up to three. Do we want to keep any of these? I think we'll get rid of shared pain. I don't want to take out one of my own minions, so we'll, we'll discard that into a discard pile and we draw a new card to bring our hand back up to three. Lightning Blast. Lightning strikes the hero. Costs us four, but a hero in an area with a summoning symbol will take one wound. There's our three new cards. And that is now the beginning of a new round and we simply come back to the board and we go again. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I could tell you that's useful. Why don't we just, I'll tell you what, why don't I just move this off here now? So you got the idea, we set the board up, you, you see how the, the flow of the play goes. So I think we've accomplished what we needed to do here. Let's just take our old friend here, Hagtha, and put her in this space with this poor militia guy. Basically a farmer who's out there trying to do his bit for everybody. Very straightforward possessing a serf. If you look at her actions that she can do, you see here we've got this action with this symbol that looks like half of a monster face and half of a normal face. Costs five stamina. So we simply pay the five stamina. There's no defense that the serf can do. And we take him off the board and replace him with a possessed surf. And the moment we do that, the moment we have a possessed surf, we then get this card becomes useful because we now control that surf as the witch master is one of our minions. Also, when you possess a surf, it counts the same as if you'd killed somebody, which means that you would move your red token on again and you would put another soul token on your tracker. What happens? Let's let's imagine that one of our minions has now knocked over another hero or, or done something and we would get one more soul token and we would put it on top of that plague marker. As soon as we get there we get to take the first plague card. 
So we see this plague here, you cannot concentrate on anything except the hunger pangs racking your body. It says it's an action, spend three stamina to spread the plague. And this will reduce sustenance by stamina by two. What I have to do as a witch was I say, okay, well, which of my witches is going to cast this? And I just pick one of them. So maybe I uh, will pick Pekka. So you put the card on Pekka so you know it was her that, that cast this. It's going to cost me three. So I have to spend my three stamina to, to cast that. As soon as we cast the plague spell, immediately every hero is going to have to reduce their stamina by the amount that the play card says. So first we calculate the amount of stamina that is locked. So the amount on the play card or the amount on the hero's matching source, whichever is smaller. Now what does it mean when it says that? Well let's we need to we need to come over and look at our hero's cards in a bit more detail. Let's have a look at Batista's card. Plague says reduce sustenance by two. So you look at the plague card and the big picture here, this red picture, this matches pretty closely one of the pictures here. This is sustenance. So what we do is we look at the, it says reduce it by two. We see that Batista's value there is four. The amount on the card is four. We move the two stamina over into that pentagram symbol. That means it's now locked. That will not refresh to the hero at the start of a new round until somebody does something to remove that plague or there is some spell or something which allows the hero to get rid of it some other way. Let's say for example if we had a plague card which was also a plague card for sustenance and let's say it said reduced by three if we were to look at Courthouse, we could see that his sustenance value is only two. So even though the play card says reduced by three, for him, we would actually only reduce by two. Batista, on the other hand, who has a sustenance value of four, we would get rid of the whole three because his sustenance value is larger. So you take whichever is the lower, the value on the card or the lower on the hero's uh, dashboard card, and that's how much gets locked away. So that's how the plagues work. Another thing that we should probably talk about is what to do, if you remember, we can still see her lying down on the board over there. Poor Corday was doing her best to try and help and she got knocked down. Now that we have started a, a new round, she has all of her stamina back. And if we look on her card, we see that she has, this is the revive symbol here. So for five of her stamina, she can revive. So she's got no choice. She either does that or she does absolutely nothing. So five go into the exhausted and she can immediately be stood back up on the board. That revive counts as one of her two actions. She could now immediately do another action, attack, move, whatever. But that is how you stand a hero back up. It's interesting to note that if there were enough plagues happening on the board at the same time, it is possible that there wouldn't be enough stamina available for her to revive herself or for one of the other heroes to revive themselves. And I guess that is how, as the Witchmaster player, you can try to, to win the game. Because, But one of the ways you can win is if all four heroes are stunned at the same time, that counts as a win. Right, I think we've covered pretty much all the basics. We didn't get much of a chance to talk about the loot cards, so I will just have a quick chat about those now. If we just take our good friend Batista again as our example, he had this axe, if you remember. And if you also remember, we did pick up a loot card for him. Now what you do with these loot cards is, because this one helps with attacking, he has to have these attributes at that level, so let's just pretend that he has. His, his strength was already at 3, he just needed his agility up at 2. So let's just pretend that we've got his agility at 2. You then simply place the card like this and put it down with it there so that you can't forget. You can see it really clearly, you can see that that is, is there and we're not going to have, you know, we're not going to forget that he can do that and add that extra yellow dice to his attack. You notice the weight of this item is 2, the weight of his axe is 4, 
and if we go and look at his car we can see that he can carry up to 12 so you always need to keep an eye on how much your heroes are carrying also if you remember the loot card we picked up for Wolgar now obviously this was Wolgar's card but we're going to pretend that this is um, Batista's card just so we can talk about it a little bit more now with this particular card he needs a defense resistance of one well he, he has two straight away at the start of the game so that's fine but he needs an agility of three so let's again let's pretend that he had taken down another baddie and had got th we increased his agility to three we would then slip this defensive card underneath the bottom of his weapon card like so now we've got our attack buff if you like our upgrade for attacking and our upgrade for defending and again by putting them like this you're not going to forget that you've got them and that's why they've done it that way so that's that's how you use the loot cards you can only ever have two equipped at a time there are lots of other loot cards if we have a look so this is another defensive one that you add to your weapon another type the cross at the bottom reminds us that we've got to throw it away you've got to have an alchemy level of two to be able to use this now this one is interesting this is nothing to do with his weapon so this doesn't go on the weapon card this is simply uh, something that you keep handy it's got a weight value to it so you, you know you can only have a certain number of these before you can't carry any more but when you attack a witch you gain plus one and that doesn't cost you any stamina and that's just whenever you attack that's a reaction so whenever you do an attack you get to do this for for you know without any stamina cost and then down here it just bit of text it burns when you place it on your finger well it's just a bit of flavor text and then the attributes that you need to have at least this level of agility and this level of um, attack strength before you can actually utilize this we didn't cast any spells as a hero so batista's card he's only got he's level one so you can see he could only do these first three spells flesh wall this is a reaction it's got a little square symbol at the beginning no stamina when you block all stars recover the stamina you exhausted to defend so i'm not sure what the star symbol means i haven't seen anything in the instructions which talk about that star symbol all i can think is it just means add one to your attack pool that that would be the most logical explanation so again if we look at batista's flesh wall for, for zero stamina when you block all whatever recover the stamina you exhausted to defend so again i think yeah i'm pretty confident that the star is talking about the value of the dice and you know the attack value or the defense value you remember if we talk about when we're defending with him he would get the two from this plus whatever he got from the red dice and the two green dice so this is saying that if you block all of the 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 dice pool of the attacker then you recover the stamina you exhausted to defend so he would recover the two to get back in his stamina pool there we go i think we've covered pretty much everything there having said all of that that's the end of my first introductory learning video for dark rituals malleus Maleficarum.